to both of you. Morgan, kick it off for us. All right, Kelly, thank you. And, and Madam Secretary, it's great to have you on. Uh, now, you've laid out this vision this week for safe and responsible AI innovation. You're doing this through the AI Safety Institute. You're building this coalition. You're signing on companies. If we just take a step back, what does the AI Safety Institute actually do? How are you defining safety? How are you implementing accountability? Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, so taking a step back, we all know, and you've just been talking about, AI carries exciting, life-changing potential for society, but only if we mitigate the very real dangers. And so, and by the way, that, that is necessary for adoption. Safety leads to trust, leads to adoption, leads to these great life-changing applications. So what we are doing is we're focusing on the science of AI to develop standards which, which should keep it safe. So what am I talking about? You know, what does adequate watermarking mean? You know, we're going to develop a standard for watermarking. So if you see a watermark which says this is authentic content or AI-generated content, you can trust that. We're going to be developing the standards for adequate red teaming which is to say models have been properly tested before they're released, and so on. Uh, I think it's really essential. It's science-based, it's technical, and it's what's going to be necessary to let AI flourish. Mm. Uh, I'm going to hone in on that word trust, uh, because OpenAI is one of the companies that, that has signed on um, this week in Seoul. It's been the subject of controversy, in addition to the fact that you've had some key executive departures in, in recent weeks. Also, the questions raised about the fact that it apparently copied or, or felt it was okay to copy Scarlett Johansson's voice for its new chatbot. Can OpenAI be trusted to revolutionize how we're working and how we're living? So from my point of view, this is, I'm not going to go through company by company. You know, there's so many AI startups, uh, and I'm not going to comment on any individual company. But I think the Scarlett Johansson example or any other example you could come up with of a deep fake is exactly the point here, right? Which is we have to develop a whole new set of standards, IP protections. Ultimately, Congress will need to act such that this is enforceable. And that's what we're getting, you know, getting to the business of doing here at the Commerce Department with our best scientists. We're hiring a team of leading experts and working with our allies around the world. In addition to announcing our new strategy today, we're announcing a global network. You know, a, a year from now, for example, what we would want is we would, we would want standards around, uh, you know, what is okay to use and not use. What is... Uh, how do we protect this IP, et cetera? And Japan, the UK, the EU, Korea, you know, we would have like-minded agreement. And as you do mention some of those countries, what does building an international coalition or network around this actually enable, especially at a time where critics have for months now been arguing that any kind of guidelines or regulatory uh, oversight here could potentially stifle U.S. innovation? It's a balance, you know, and it's a balance. I am as focused on increasing the pace of innovation as I am on, uh, you know, thinking about safety. They do go hand in hand. I mean, if we were to allow AI to get out of hand, not have guardrails, that erodes trust, that will stifle innovation. So, you know, like half of my job is investing in chips all of AI runs on chips. I know you're going to talk about NVIDIA later today, I'm sure. You know, all AI runs on these GPUs. So we need to move ahead as fast as possible. And also at the same time, develop just like cyber. You know, for example, here at the Commerce Department, we set forth a cyber risk management framework, which all of industry uses. Same with AI. We need to set forth an AI uh, safety framework so that we use it. We move faster. Mm. Right now, we lead the world in AI. Right? That is a good thing. I, you and I have talked about China in the past. We talk about yeah. national security. We have to run faster. Right now, we lead the world in AI. We need to stay there. So it's that constant balance of going fast, out innovating, but not letting the wheels come off uh, and protecting ourselves. It's, it's like you took the question out of my mouth, because we do have NVIDIA reporting earnings later today. AI is in focus. Um, in terms of 
the export controls you've already put in place around the newest, most cutting edge chip technology uh, and countering China. Do you feel what you've put in place goes far enough, especially as we've seen some more regulations come out where Huawei specifically is concerned? Yeah, you know, uh, it's a constant day. There's no point in time. Literally every day we wake up, we reassess the threats, we reassess the technologies, we reassess China's capability, and we decide what more should we be doing. So I am proud of the fact that I have been, and Commerce Secretary, you know, more aggressive and more comprehensive in our approach to China and, and protecting our technology than anyone before. That being said, have we done enough? No, right? No, because the, every day, tech, new technology is being invented. They find ways to go around our existing controls. We have to find ways to tighten them. It's a daily vigilance to make sure. And anyone listening to this who runs a company knows what I'm talking about. You have to wake up every day and go at it. If you want to outcompete the world, as I do, I want U.S. companies to be able to outcompete the world. It's like every day you go back at it again. Secretary Raimondo, always great to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC. Thank you. Have a good day.